Hello and welcome back to another video. Before we start, you probably think to yourself, there was no MacBook Air in 2004, what are you talking about? There weren't even MacBooks in 2004, only iBooks, let alone a MacBook Air. That wouldn't show up until 2008. But if things had gone a little different in 2001, this Vio might actually be the MacBook Air's predecessor. Let me explain. Steve Jobs has reportedly always been a huge fan of Sony. So Sony and Apple had a very good relationship in the 1990s and early 2000s. Sony did for example build Apple's first successful laptop, the PowerBook 100. Steve Jobs even casually visited Sony co-founder Akio Morita on a regular basis. During that time Apple had been working on an Intel version of Mac OS X, many years prior to the 2005 reveal. In winter 2001, Jobs met with Sony executives at a golf course in Hawaii to show them a prototype version of macOS running on a Sony Vio notebook. Jobs wanted to license macOS out to Sony, so they could build notebooks with macOS on them. Sadly, Sony declined the offer, since they just spent much time and money optimizing the Vio products for Windows and were unsure if it would be worth it to do the same for macOS. Now think about what would have happened if they did actually agree. Steve Jobs was always a fan of ultra-portable laptops, so he would probably have been quite impressed by the Vio X505. Besides this, it has so much in common with the MacBook Air that would release in 2008. Both have a wedge-shaped metal case, both needed to compromise to achieve their thinness, they used 1.8-inch hard drives, commonly found in MP3 players like the iPod. They omitted I.O. that was standard for the time, including optical drives. The Vio is even fanless, something Steve Jobs always loved. So I would say we can conclude that if the macOS licensing deal would have gone through in 2001, the Vio X505 would probably be running macOS, or have a variant running macOS. Quite intrigued by this, I thought to myself, how would something like that look like? For context. I've been in love with the MacBook Air since I first saw it. I eventually bought one and still use it to this day. I also have been interested in Hackintoshes since probably 2007 and built many since then. So I thought I would give it a try and install macOS on this Vio. And this is where the insanity began. The problem with the Vio X505 is that it does only have 512 megabytes of RAM and uses a low power Pentium M that does not support SSE3 instructions. So I needed a kernel that can support an old Pentium and emulate the SSE3 instructions needed by macOS. This left me mainly with macOS 10 Tiger, Leopard and Snow Leopard. The next problem was that the Vio is too old to boot from USB. Only the Firewire disk drive from the last episode would work. Now normally I would do a vanilla Hackintosh using OpenCore or Clover. But back then distributions where all files are packaged on one disk image were way more common. Also most of the download links from back then for individual files are broken by now and tutorials or forums long gone. So I thought distros, some of which can still be found on places like archive.org, were my best bet. As you can see, I was very wrong. I tried different versions of IPC, iAdcos, iDeneb and Jazz. All with different boot flags, using a hot reboot from Windows XP, etc. I was able to install Jazz Tiger and iAdcos v7 Leopard, but both would not boot. I tried multiple kernels and other texts. But like I said, troubleshooting is hard when almost all files and forums are not available and you're using a super niche Sony laptop from 2004. There are still more options, like installing a vanilla Snow Leopard on the SD card using a real Mac, adding the Kext's bootloader kernel to it and putting it back in the Vio. But after spending most of the evenings of the last two weeks, I gave up for now and looked at other ways to get macOS. The first one was using virtualization, like VirtualBox or VMware Workstation. I couldn't find a compatible version of VirtualBox, but of VMware. So I installed Windows XP again and tried old versions of VMware, 
starting at version 9. Versions 9, 8 and 7 complained about missing instructions of the CPU. Version 5 and 6 would quit once I tried to start a VM because they needed PAE. The Pentium M supports PAE but does not report so to the OS. VMware also only allowed me to assign 300 MB of RAM to macOS, since Windows XP also needs some memory of course. My next idea was transformation packs. If I can't get macOS to run on this computer, I could at least try to get the look of macOS. I used a theme called mac for lin back on Ubuntu 10, I think. So after installing Ubuntu 10 alongside Windows XP, I tried to install this theme. The theme can actually still be found, but the repositories with the dependencies are all down and I couldn't track all of the files down manually. So that was a huge waste of time. Now my last idea was a Windows XP transformation pack. I also used one of those back in the day. After some quick googling I found out that the pack I used was called Fly a Kite OS X and transforms Windows XP into a macOS Tiger lookalike. After downloading and installing this, we are finally in the present. It is not the most convincing effect, but does capture the essence of macOS Tiger's Aqua theme quite well. And I have to say, I quite like the look of the Aqua theme on this hardware. Tiger is from 2005 and the Vio from 2004, so it does kind of fit from an era perspective. So now that we have a Vio that looks like it's running macOS, all we have to do is enact the classic scene where Steve Jobs pulls the MacBook out of an envelope. Anyway, if you liked this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, maybe how I try to do a vanilla Hackintosh, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.